Aloha, everyone. Welcome to our new, brand new show, Staying Young at Heart. Um, this is our episode one, and uh, my, my name is Maria Mera. I'm here, going to be your host. And uh, the reason why we start this show is because we want to, um, to know how to stay young at heart, but not only physically, but mentally, uh, financially, emotionally, intellectually. Um, and we have, we're going to have really good guests. My first guest, I couldn't think of anyone better than Russell Ryan. Russell is the CEO, the CFO of the Highway Inn, and he is married to the CFO. Uh, but he's been, this is his second career. He's been for working for the aviation industry for over 30 years. Um, so without further delay, please, Russell, uh, thank you very much for joining me today. Pleasure to be here. It's a, it's, it's a gloomy uh, Monday afternoon in Hawaii. It looks like your your side of the, <laughs> of the island is a little better. <laughs> yes, it does. Yeah, wonders of technology. <laughs> That's it. I, I think we are all learning. So, Russell, I know your accent is not as thick as, far, as mine, but um, where are you from? Well, um, I'm actually from England. I've lived in the States now for coming up on 30 years and in Hawaii for about 15. So I originally, originally from England, but uh, prior to that, I lived all over the world in many different countries. So, uh, so this is what actually let's, 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 lived in. let's narrow it down. What brought you to the U.S.? Well, in my, in my prior career, as you mentioned, I was in, I was in the aviation business. And um, if you've ever wondered where aircraft come from, you know, how aircraft uh, show up at airlines and how, you know, where they come from, who buys them, who acquires them. That was my job. I, so I used to actually place airplanes with airlines. That was my job. So that took me all over the world. So, so um, if you all remember Aloha Airlines, Aloha Airlines. I, I do. Yes, I do. <laughs> yeah. So when Aloha Airlines was going through its troubles in um, the mid 2000s, I came over as a consultant to uh, help them with their overall fleet plan. But unfortunately what happened was, was um, some of these new little airlines came in, like Mesa, I think it was, and then Aloha Airlines uh, went bankrupt and we couldn't, we couldn't implement the changes we needed fast enough in order to survive, get Aloha to survive. So I, I jumped over to Hawaiian Airlines and uh, for about five, six years. So um, is, that, is that why you came to Hawaii to work with Aloha Airlines? Yeah, just as a consultant, just coming over here to um, help them restructure their aircraft fleet and um, try to get them to survive. But of course, uh, that that didn't happen. Uh, yeah, sometimes good. sometimes I've been in the newspaper industry, and sometimes it doesn't matter how much effort you put, um, the tendency and the trend of the market um, is is unstoppable. Uh, so that was 15 years ago, and we know now that you're the CFO the CFO of uh, the highway. How how did yeah. you, how how did that happen? <laughs> well, it was really funny. Right around the time when Aloha went uh, filed Chapter Seven, when they finally went out of business, I started dating this girl who happens to be. Um, the, the great granddaughter of the founder of Highway Inn. And so I was saying, well, it looks like I'm going to be going back to the mainland now to go resume my career in the aviation business. And she said, no, no, I didn't call up Hawaiian and see if they'll employ you. So I, I did. <laughs> I happen to know um, Peter Ingram, who is now the CEO of Hawaiian Airlines. I happen to know him from a prior life. And um, he at the time was the CFO. So I called up Peter and said, uh, Peter, um, what do you have in the way of opening some people like me? And so long story short, I ended up working there for about the next five, six years. Wow. Um, so I think we have a picture. Maybe Eric can help us to So um, for th those of you who are not so familiar with the highway in and you've been living in a cave uh, <laughs> or inside, uh, let's show a picture of uh, of Monica and Ryan. So because I think awesome. many people will recognize her too. Yeah, that there is actually opening day of our new Waipahu location in, and that opened in December last year. 
So um, how is it to work with, uh, and, and for some reason I cannot see those pictures, but um, I'm, I've seen them before, so I'll follow you. But how is it to work with your wife and, uh, and, <laughs> and live with it? And mostly like th that, that intensity of, I know how the two of you work and, and you're two of the people that I know are more hardest working <laughs> and that I know. And uh, so how, how is that? Is it, is it um, any recommendation for couples who work together? You know, to, to use a restaurant analogy, um, you know, you can't have too many cooks in the kitchen. And the, the great thing about our uh, working and personal lives is we don't really overlap very much in our, in our yeah. relationships. So we don't have the classic issue of, um, disputing an item on the menu or concerned about a recipe or a business strategy we're very um we're very egalitarian when it comes to the things that she wants and things that i think are good and then we, we literally just have our own areas of responsibility and and then we have sort of informal meetings all day long and yeah. uh, and and you know we uh we share an office but uh, you know we you know, of course, every now and then, you know, you get in each other's hair, and you know. Do you, you do you do you force yourself to okay, let's have dinner and not talk about business at all? No, you know, it's um, it, it, we, we talk about it, it, it's it's all the time. You know, it's basically it'll it'll yeah. pierce in every now and then. You know, it, you know, it doesn't really matter what we're doing; it'll suddenly crop up. You know, it, okay. it's you I, know, twenty four seven. I, so I, I and I also want to keep this so relevant to the times that we live in, and uh, and of course uh, we need to talk about the virus and uh, how is this affecting? I mean the the entire world, right? But how is this affecting you as one of the restaurants in Hawaii? Uh, it, it has to be really hard. Um, can you can you elaborate a little bit on that? Yeah, yeah. In fact, um, it, it's essentially what happened in April. Um, everything just stopped, essentially. And then it popped back up again. Um, and essentially, it was pretty steady through for about the next five or six months. And the um, revenues neither went up or down. And then we had the various openings and closings. And we had to obviously beef up our takeout, we started delivery, we did online servicing. Um, we got a whole online engine, and literally the business is a shadow of its former self, albeit right now with the Hawaii restaurant part and with the um, uh, the, the reestablishment of tourists coming in, and a couple of other little initiatives we've had and some grants. Uh, that that's truly helping. Um, yeah. So what, what part? Of, sorry, what, what part of your um, customers are? Um, Tourists versus locals. Well, in in our in our location in town, it's about roughly a third, a third, a third. So a third local, a third business, a third tourist, roughly. Okay. Um, out in Waipahu, it's more like um, 80, 90 percent local and 10 percent business. You just you just uh, opened a new location in Waipahu, right? So it just right. happened right when you were opening the new location. The timing couldn't have been uh, it couldn't have been worse. Yeah, we have, no, we had one month of good report, with good data, and then after that, everything disappeared. Yeah, and and it has to be hard. I mean, a, a very healthy business like yours and. Um, uh, for me, that I, I again, I'm a full disclosure. I work as a financial advisor with Edward Jones, but I see uh, businesses that I used to work with um, who are really struggling, and it's um, it's it's hard to see. I, I mean, even even now that Hawaii is opening, it seems like um, I I think I read today that still 24% of the businesses are closed. So how how do you see that progressing? Do you think we are going to um, we're going to close again, or are you? Are you more optimistic? Well, as long as as long as the customer facing businesses can either if they if they're forced to close, they can receive grants so they can stay alive. That's the most important thing because it makes no sense to cut off a customer facing business's revenue stream and then still expect them to pay their bills. Um, yeah. Clearly, a, a business can pay a, uh, operating costs 
such as, you know, if I buy food, I sell the food. If I have labor, I can pay the labor. But I'm a fraction of my former size, so it's really hard to pay the larger fixed costs that show up every single month. So provided there's money available to allow us to be able to do that, then, then, then you know, the future should be okay. It, it really just depends on the, um, the good graces of those um, the landlords and the banks and the insurance companies and uh, and the government to provide that to fill that gap up because um, you know the, when your revenues in half or approximately you, you know businesses just can't survive uh, in the long yeah. term. So I'm going to put you on the hot spot here and <laughs> linking this to the elections. Are you hopeful one of the candidates will win and that will help? Your business and, and yeah, good question, uh, yeah. Or or yeah. Well, a lot of businesses, a lot of businesses, obviously think about you know the taxes and and those things. So they so there's sort of this thing that if you're a business owner, you um, you have to lean one side of the political spectrum. But I'm I'm not a subscriber to that because I think the world is a bigger place than just focusing on myself and uh, what tax breaks I can get next year. So um, I want, you know, I want to see uh, a healthy environment, a healthy country, a happy country, and um, and I'm looking forward to that um, in, in the next. Week. <laughs> I, I won't ask you more, just in case. <laughs> but uh, um, do you vote both in the UK and the and, and No, the no. In fact. Um, in fact, I've been disenfranchised from voting in the UK because I've been gone longer than 15 years. So they basically kicked me off the voter registry, the registration in England. But I do vote here, obviously, because I am a naturalized citizen here. Yeah. Um, in fact, it's kind of funny you should mention that because at the time I was actually working for the John Kerry campaign in 2004 oh. when I became a naturalized citizen. And um, uh, because I was in the aviation business, and as you know, um, presidents to be or, or presidential candidates, they fly around the country in a furious pace in the last two months is doing all their rallies. Well, they need an airplane for that. And it just happened that John Kerry well, rented. Some, some, some seem like they are not traveling that much. <laughs> well, in the, in the oh, current so. times, yeah, they, they, they're, they're traveling like we're traveling right now. <laughs> so were, were you in Hawaii when you were um, helping Kerry's campaign? No, no, I was living in Miami. And um, that's the time because I had a whole portfolio of uh, businesses in South America that I was visiting regularly um, at the time. Yeah, I, I, there are so many layers on your work and that I, I, I'm going to, we have half an hour, so I'm just going to try to be focused. But um, Eric, why don't you show the video of uh, the highway? So just in case um, people want to see some food and something happy. Yeah, this is this is Russell now. This is Russell's new life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Highway Okay, um, I'm getting hungry. <laughs> can you can you tell me what that was? That was our, our most popular dish, which is the Lao Lao combo plate, and um, we put that commercial together about a year ago now. Um, it's sort of using that stop motion animation, which was which was pretty nice, and that's our most popular yeah. most popular video on YouTube right now that, that, that is the that um purple potato is that okinawa potato that yeah, they say okay. okinawa. yeah okinawa and sweet potato yeah so are, are you are you trying to be healthy at the same time that you're hawaiian is that an oxymoron or i mean is, is that <laughs> something that you can uh do at the same time or? oh of course yeah yeah the um a lot of the hawaiian food is 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 relatively helpful uh, especially the the lao lao because it has those leaves you know the taro and the, lu the, the luau leaves, and you know obviously the potatoes. The um, there are some obviously some fattening things on the menu that uh, you know, like, 
that you don't you don't want to sort of eat too much of. Um, but it's obviously you know with you know with with the fish on the menu and yeah, uh, yeah, I've been there. And from, from again from a fellow European, and I brought my family there, and um, they loved it. <laughs> so I think uh, you can adjust to any palate. Um, so back back to Europe. Um, tell me tell me how do you see the situation in the UK? And and again we're complaining about that about the situation in Hawaii, um, but it seems like Europe is struggling so much, right? It's, it's to me it's very hard to watch. Um, yeah, yeah. The England is as as many of your reviewers, listeners, or viewers watching this will know about. They've heard something about Brexit. That's where basically Britain is divorcing themselves from the European Union, which they've been in now for 30 years, I think, something along those lines. So they're the first country to ever decide to back out of the European Union. And of course, it's filled with ambiguity. Um, personally, I, I, I don't think it's a smart decision because I think the, um, I think the UK is better off um, cooperating, working within the institution, and uh, working towards the end of creating a common trading block. But of course, a very a populist sentiment took over where people were convinced that they were they didn't have their sovereignty every long any longer. And no one really knew what that meant. And you know, if you look at what yeah. sovereign, sovereignty means versus what people had, the people weren't really voting um, for the reasons they thought they were voting. They were voting for sort of more populist right right leaning motives um so to do with immigration and sort of stuff. and and uh again uh, i have um members of my of my direct family who work for um the european union uh do you do you think that um it will go back or do you have any hopes that it will go back to uk being a member of the european union or do I, I think people do people yeah, care at this point? I can give it a give it a decade maybe, and people will be thinking, yeah, things aren't quite as good as we thought they were going to be. Um, and um, you know, you know, Britain's decline from being a world power a um, hundred years ago. This is the final chapter in that, and uh, they may decide that they have to jump back in in order to uh, in order to get some of the benefits of being associated in a large trading block. Yeah, and it seems like there are so many things going on right now that the Brexit that it was it was doing break up news uh, all the time. Now it's it's like one thing that none of us even it, it puts everything in 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 the rare view, right? It like now we realize health is really all that matters. Yes, yeah, that's right, and um, I think but you know the shine is already off Boris Johnson's ball. Yeah, that's a cricketing analogy. <laughs> and he's, he's, uh, so he's, uh, so he's um, you know, just as popular as Donald Trump right now. So in terms of his favorability rating, so, the, you know, that's, that's, that's the unfortunate thing. He needs to, he needs to be a little more like Angela Merkel, who's the most popular president in Europe right now. Yeah. Or, or, or like, um, or like Jacinda Ardern in New Zealand, she would be, uh, <laughs> I think everyone would want her popularity. So, right so we need, we, basically, we need a woman. <laughs> we need a woman. <laughs> that wouldn't be a bad thing. <laughs> okay, we're going to take a little break right now, but uh, we'll be right back with everybody. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Russell. We'll, we'll be right back.
Welcome back to Staying Young at Heart. And uh, our first episode, we continue talking to our very interesting guest, Russell Ryan. Russell, thank you very much. So um, we've, been, we've been covering as much as we can in, as, uh, in, uh, in half an hour, but uh, I, I, we came back before the break to Europe. Um, and back to your uh, childhood, how did you stay healthy and how did you stay active when you were there? You know, it's funny. I was actually born in one of those um, uh, red dots on the map that Britain used to um, control. So I spent my life, uh, I, I grew up in Singapore. And when I was in Singapore, I uh, swam and I loved swimming. And uh, when, <laughs> by, the time, by the time I got back to um, England, I found myself to be a quite advanced swimmer in comparison to my colleagues. So I actually ended up swimming uh, a pretty high level in, in England when I was there, when I lived there. And, and then right around the age of 12 or 13, I just stopped and didn't really get back into it again until I was back in university. And, um, but all the time, yeah, just swimming, doing races. And, uh, and of course the university, I was in the swim team, water polo team and, um, you just used to run all the time. And, and it was around about that time, I think I did my first ever triathlon when I was at a university, when I was a young lad, so. So basically every possible is for like a penta, pentathlete or, <laughs> yeah. uh, so, and, and, and again, I've, I've witnessed you swimming. As you know, I'm a very um, avid swimmer too. And we swam the North Shore series um, together. That was really, uh, right. it, they got they got canceled this year, but this year it's, it's a very special swim in Hawaii, and for some reason it doesn't like it doesn't seem like it's that famous or cover or um, what do you think that is? Yeah, it's it's funny. I just I just don't think people are that interested, and and you know the reality is watching a bunch of people swimming in the water is not not very exciting from afar. <laughs> not so far. You know, the only action is when you see people running in and then coming out at the end. And that, that's really it. But, but, you know, for us, we see a tremendous amount of things. You know, we see all the, yeah. the fishes and the, uh, the dolphins and the other animals and the, the, the reefs down there. And, of course, the physical challenge of doing it is, is a, very personal, uh, a very personal thing. So um, let me ask you, do you do open swimming water, open water swimming when you're by yourself in Hawaii? Yeah, yeah. In fact, um, well, I, I, I was out this week, but I wasn't really in the open water because uh, I don't <laughs> I don't want to be out around sharks. Uh, um, that's I, what I, I was going. That's what I was going with it. I, yeah. I swim in Alamoana in the in the park, uh, right. but it's basically very protected. So um, I have I've seen turtles, but I, uh, other than that, um, even though the water is a little murky, but it's, it's you feel safer, right? Yeah, yeah, it, it, it is safe. Um, it, it's just murky there. Um, but the water's been murky all summer, all, all on the South Shore, um, I've noticed. Um, and now there's sharks at Kaimana Beach, so I, I haven't been there in a while. So what, what, what do you do now? Do you find time to um, keep swimming or? Yeah, well, I still, do, I, mean, I, still do, I still do all the things, you know, run, swim, and bike. Um, I used to race mountain bikes. Um, used to. So you you keep doing you keep doing all the sports that you were doing um, when you were a child. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. In fact, you know. In fact, I think I mentioned there's a picture of me. I sent over the last race I did. No, the last but one race I did. I think um, I've done a whole bunch of races in my life. I think over 80 triathlons or multi-sport events um, in my life. To you know, because they're just so much fun. And then just this weekend, I was up uh, bushwhacking up on the bushwhacking up in the mountains here with my dogs hiking. Um, you know, <laughs> so always, always trying to do something which is just outdoors, fun and exciting. And yeah, it's uh, a little muddy, no? Uh, do they? Was it? Yeah, it was a little, it was a little yeah, muddy. yeah, but it, it definitely makes it fun. Um, so other than um, than exercise, do you keep a different diet or um, just to stay healthy? Yes, I tend to, um, I, I obviously, I've tried to be plant-based 
uh, as much as possible and fish and a little bit of a little bit of meat um, but predominantly predominantly that um, and you know the good news is as you get older you don't really want to crave candy yeah right? And well, <laughs> you know, just a little bit. You know, depends you know. on depends on the person. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so, true. What about to stay healthy um, mentally, to uh, and intellectually? What do you do to just keep engaging your brain, other than work and work and work? Yeah, you've got you've got to read. You know, reading is and there's so many. I mean, Warren Buffett reads a book a week or whatever it is. <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah. You, you have to read. I mean, I read obviously. You know, I read as much as I can about what's going on, um, and you know, you trying to remain, um, trying to remain the engaged. The, the dogs there. Go. Uh, unfortunately, the hiking, uh, the hiking companions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the dogs are on the other side of the door, so uh, <laughs> they probably want to go for a hike. <laughs> something just happened. Yeah, so obviously, reading uh, is 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 the most important thing, and obviously, engaging with. Engaging with intelligent people is, is obviously a good thing. Uh, okay, well, I'm glad I'm glad you're talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> so one one more thing, uh, how do you stay healthy um, emotionally? How do you? Is is it like for me? Um, swimming helps me also emotionally, and swimming yeah. and exercising is that is is part of like. It's not only the physical exercise, but it's almost like therapeutic. Right, that's for sure. Yeah, one of the benefits of exercise, we you know those two exercise know is it really just it really just mellows you out and removes removes a lot of stress and helps crystallize your thinking on a lot of things as well. Um, so it, so it, it truly is that truly is a good um, a good thing. But but gen generally, you know, variety uh, is 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 very important always um always be looking for you know to be interested in new things like look at new things all the time but um but obviously i don't <laughs> there's certain subjects i like i'm totally not interested in that <laughs> within that within that area of, of things which interest me uh, obviously to be uh, to be continually curious and continually trying to learn and understand different things yeah. Do you try to travel as well, or is that part of? Um... Yeah, we were in uh, we were in Europe actually this year. We um, we went to um, we actually went to stay in a castle in the West Wales. Um, oh. Yeah, that was fascinating. We stayed there, and then we stayed in a we stayed in a stately home in England as well. We went we went to do that. Just visiting visiting family or. Visiting friends and family. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we went, we yeah. I was I was actually in Spain in March um, visiting my family and uh, and it's when all hell broke loose and I had to come back and just make sure that I, that I stayed in Hawaii before everything closed. <laughs> I got back to, on March 10th. Yeah, we got back March 10th, I think. Like I, and I was back March 17th. So here we are. Um, if, if you're going to be locked down, better be locked down in Hawaii. Um, yeah. Russell, Russell, I want to uh, finish our super fun <laughs> time together with a few questions that I would like. It's, it's just quick questions, no wrong or right answer, just your answer. Uh, let's, let's do this quick to see how, um, what, just follow your, follow your gut here. Um, who do you look up to in life? Who's your hero? Who's my hero in life? Gosh, I I really don't have a hero. Um, okay. I really I really really don't. I've um, never been, never. Been, I, I try to gain a little from everyone that I see. I don't I have like one. That. Can't be a, Your favorite song? My favorite song. I think it's one by U two. Okay, favorite book, and again, you you can just say something that the book talks about or philosophy or. But if you have a title, oh, you know, I I read a really good book recently called Sapiens, um, which is very very good. I'd recommend that to to anybody. The audience. Okay, book. the worst day of your life. The the what? Sorry. The worst worst day of your life. 
oh my gosh, the worst day of my life. Um, oh gosh, the worst day of my life. What was that? Or a bad one. It, did I did I ever have one? I'm sure I'm sure I have had one, but I can think of I can think of a few. <laughs> a few. I can think okay, of a few, maybe two. maybe let's two go. or three bad days. <laughs> let's go with the best day of your life. The best day of my life. Well, the best day of my life, and and this is a uh, this is something you don't have control over, and I don't think a lot of people know. But the best day of your life is being born. Um, if you think about the probability of being here, you yeah. know, that is the luckiest, best day of anybody's life. You know, that's a really, that's a really deep, uh, that's a really yeah. good question, Russell. I never even thought about it. I was, I was answering on my own, how would I answer this question? And um, I, I really like your answer. Yeah. Um, who is your favorite person to hang out with? Oh, yeah. my. my my wife, my wife, I, and, I and, she, and she's one. not sitting right here, so. Uh. <laughs> uh, what is your favorite meal? Um, it, other than Hawaiian food, <laughs> can I take a pass on Hawaiian food? Because I have to okay. say Yeah, <laughs> I'll give you a pass. I'm partial to, uh, I like Indian food, <laughs> and um, I'm, very, I, I'm very partial to good Indian food, yeah. Good flavors. Um, your favorite place? My favorite place. Well, you know, um, not to not to take too long, but um, I've lived and I've lived in five countries. I visited over seventy, and uh, I never lived in any place more than one year before, or one or two years before arriving in Hawaii. And I've been here fifteen, so so That's logically, nice. logically, it must be here. <laughs> it's, it's by itself, yeah. Uh, yeah. What motivates you to work hard? Um, you know, there's always a better way to do something, and there's always a better way to do something smarter and better. And there's a lot of people and a lot of responsibilities that you know that, that you accumulate over the years. So you end up just working harder and harder and harder to maintain everything that you're building, and you just cannot imagine that you could suddenly stop doing that um, because you have to keep building on that base. Continue. Yeah, the responsibility. Yeah. Um, how, how do you think your friends um, describe you? <laughs> yeah, it's really funny. Like I think some people may know me as just a swimmer. Some people may know me as just a, a work colleague or a boss. Um, <laughs> you know, so it, it's, it's, it, it's going to be really, really funny, but my, but my friends, I think, um, a, a lot of friends, they've always asked me, they say, are you CIA? <laughs> are you British Secret <laughs> Service? So, they, so, so, what I, so what I think they describe me as is somebody who's had a very colorful, very colorful background and set of experiences, which is very different from the norm, um, is, is, what, is what I take from that. Yeah. Um, how do you see yourself in 20 years? 20 years, hopefully above ground, um, <laughs> and uh, hopefully still exercising. And and the other thing is, is I'm actually I'm not yet, but I'm very soon to become a father for the first time. So uh, in 20 years, I'm going to have a 20 year old kid. So I, hope, I hope that I'm a good, a good father figure role model, and don't get mistaken as a grandpa too many times. <laughs> That is, um, that is so, uh, it's so amazing. Congratulations to you and Monica. I've told you before, I tell you again, I'm, um, as, a, as a friend of the family, I, uh, I, I can't wait to see the, that little baby. And um, okay, so I'm just gonna go for it. Um, what is the name for the baby? <laughs> we, we don't know yet. We still, uh, <laughs> we still don't know the gender. I, yes. I have an idea if uh, if you have a girl. <laughs> okay, and as a friend, Russell, um, you have so many layers. You're one of the smartest um, people mm -hmm. I know, and uh, and I don't say this easily, um, but I it's always a pleasure. It seems like every time I talk to you, um, I discover something new, and we've known each other for years. 
And uh, I, I, I really admire and I really enjoy talking to you. If you want to say a, a few words before um, we just say goodbye to our this first episode, please, um, the floor is yours. Well, you know, there's, there's a, you know, a lot of ways in life to, to approach it. You know, you've always got to be optimistic. Um, like, I, like I mentioned a little while ago, you've got to be so thankful that you're here because the probability of being here in in um you know basically here on this planet and then here as a human and then here at this time is is we you are know, some of the most fortunate creatures to ever live in the universe the fortunate species to have lived so enjoy it and uh keep being optimistic and um that that that's really what it that's really what it's about it's a great it's a whole approach to life Thank you very much, Russell. I could not have closed better. So um, to our audience, stay young at heart and please join us on our next episode, November 24th at 4 p.m. We are looking forward to keep this so um, going. And if you have any question, please send them to Think Tech Hawaii. Uh, thank you very much for joining us today, Russell. And thank you to all of you for, for listening. <laughs>